In this series, we are playing through the tutorial of Airport CEO, but also going beyond what the tutorial tells you. The tutorial itself is fairly straightforward, but there's quite a few things it doesn't really make clear or just plain doesn't tell you. And most of them are fairly straightforward and you'll figure them out along the way, but some of them are actually quite obscure and I'd rather tell you about them than have you suffer through some of the puzzles that you might go through otherwise. So, let's start with the actual introduction of the interface. This is the build panel. It has all your options for what type of objects you can build. Some of them can't be clicked on yet because we haven't done the necessary research. This is the management panel. It has a whole bunch of different tabs. The dashboard is honestly pretty useless and you won't look at it very much. The economy tab is very important. Um, not only does it tell you about your income and your expenses, it also lets you control how much you charge for services. It lets you take out loans. It lets you manage your contracts and accept new contracts. The Operations tab lets you open or close your airport. You will pretty much only ever do that once. It lets you um, enable general aviation, which is private aircraft. Um, it lets you control what services your airport supplies, it tells you when the lights switch on and off, and all of those sorts of bits and pieces. Um, you can manage your contractors from here. Contractors are the people that actually build your airport. So in this game, you will draw out, I want my terminal here and I want my runway there. They don't take effect until they've been constructed. Um, to the right is, oh yes, this. So, these little, uh, I'm going to call them lights, icons I guess, tell you how well your airport is running. Obviously everything's NA at the moment because we don't even have an airport, but um, there's an overall rating which contributes to um, a thing called Airport of the Year. Other than that, it's not a big factor, it just gives you insight into where you might have trouble in your airport. Say, if security is running really slowly, your passengers are going to start complaining about queuing too long. Okay, in, back in the management tab, there are emails. Now, if you're anything like me and you do the kind of job that I do, you are sick to death of emails. This game sends you many emails. Thankfully, you can ignore pretty well all of them. How much you want to look at these and how much you want to just completely ignore them, that's going to vary from person to person. There is some useful information in here, but mostly you can just ignore it. Uh, let's see. Okay, the flight planner, which you can see down there, or press the F key. Once you've got commercial flights up and running, this is how you schedule them in. We'll be coming to that in a lot more detail when, once we actually get to that part of the tutorial. It also has an auto planner option that we can use later on. Um, right, that's pretty much the completion of the interface even though it's really not. And then we get into the tutorial itself. So before we go into that, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the interface because there are some things that the game hasn't told you. Firstly, if you were to press G, which I believe is this button here, it's got the flight monitor. I don't believe the game ever actually tells you about the flight monitor. It just exists. Once you've got commercial flights up and running, 
they will pop in here and you can track them to say um, yeah this flight number it's got this many people leaving it's got this many people arriving this is when it's due to arrive this is when it's due to take off how many of the new passengers have arrived and so on and so forth this panel is super helpful in diagnosing problems with your airport every now and then you'll go oh there's a pop-up here saying this flight is delayed but it doesn't tell you why it's delayed you have to go in here and nut it out um, let's see time can't do much with that the date beware there are 12 days in a year as far as this game is concerned they've tied the day night cycle to the cycle of months so every three days the season changes uh, the weather yeah you'll see some rain you might see some snow things like that doesn't have a huge impact on the game um, flight schedule we were looking oh see I didn't even know this panel existed <laughs> and that's the kind of problem we have with tutorials and games often tutorials in games including this game in particular are written before the game is finished so features come and go features might get mentioned that don't exist and lots of features get added that don't get put into the tutorial uh, flight schedule I'm going to ignore for the moment that's going to be more relevant much further down the line but mostly we'll be looking at the flight planner and the flight monitor the schedule is nice it'll tell you when things are due but that's really no different to looking at this screen and seeing okay we've got this many planes coming in the next three hours these buttons down here control overlays they won't do much right now but later on they become very useful for two reasons one because you want to know where things are but two because when you go into certain modes they switch on automatically and sometimes that makes it really hard to see what you're doing so in certain circumstances you actually want to switch them off right um, we've got our build panel we've got our number of passengers number of staff at the moment there's just one because that's the CEO which is me or you package which will be something that we deal with a lot later aircraft etc etc so these are all little just indicators really to tell you how busy your airport is but they do have meaning particularly in the staff section the staff section and the vehicle section will tell you how many jobs are available so if there's three planes wanting to get avgas right now there would be a three here and if you've only got one truck um, it's obviously going to have to queue up those jobs before it can get through them seeing that you've got lots of jobs available is a sign that you might need to buy more vehicles of a certain type same with staff if you've got 120 service passenger uh, sorry passenger service agent jobs available but you've only got 10 passenger service agents you've got a problem if you get that many jobs available you've probably done something wrong <laughs> um, right analysis and testing these tools are going to be very useful but not very frequently again there's something the tutorial doesn't tell you and you will need to use them basically what they do is tell you whether a vehicle can transit or a pedestrian can get from one place to another or a security officer can get from one place to another and so on and so forth it might not sound like something you need but trust me later on in the game you're going to be thankful that these tools exist because people are going to not be able to get where they're going and you're going to wonder where the gap is this will help you find the gaps and fix them heat maps talk about 
how busy areas are, which is useful for knowing um, where to place franchise shops, like your cafes and your McDonald's and so forth. Paintbrush. You can recolor things, there's not a lot to talk about there. Um, you can save your colors. Right click to save, left click to choose it. You can paint things, you can't paint everything. You get the idea. Building tools has one of the most important features of the entire game, and that is planning mode. If you're in planning mode, the build bar down here turns white. If you're not in planning mode, it is yellow. If you've placed something, let's go with um, let's go with the light. If you place something in the game and you're in build mode, you're in yeah, build mode, your contractors will try to build it straight away. It will cost you money straight away. If you're in planning mode, which you can get to with a shortcut of pressing P, then you can do as much as you want. For example, I could draw out a huge, huge terminal section. And it won't cost me a cent. I don't want a uh, terminal that large, but I'm just demonstrating. This doesn't cost me any money, my contractors will ignore it, it's all good. I can go, oops, I didn't mean to do it that way, I wanted a T-shape. Then I could go, oops, no, I wanted a bit more here. You can muck around as much as you want and nothing will charge, nothing will cost and your contractors won't start trying to build it. To remove things that you've placed like this, by the way, hold down control. That dem demolishes it. Um, that pretty much covers it for the interface. I think it's time we move on to actually building our airport.